And for how long? Winter, spring, summer, fall, seasons change. We still keep it together. Hey, Beverly Hills 90210 fans. Are you ready to dive deep? Episode by episode. Storyline by storyline. Character by character. As we break down the making of your favorite zip code. With your host. <laughs> Charles Rose. Did I say that? Yeah. Harry Mullen. This heinous thing about the, the, the real person. And we go, what? We're getting rid of this guy. Pete Ferrero. I'm feeling wonderful. <laughs> Kathleen <laughs> looks crush, TV crush worthy. Like so many special guests. And all your questions. Live on the Beverly Hills 90210 show. Oh, yeah. Okay, long intro, sorry. Welcome to the no. Beverly Hills 90210 show. I'm super excited because we have Josie DiVincenzo here with us, um, who was Pia Swanson in Beverly Hills 90210 in seasons 9 and 10. And this is really exciting. I don't even know how we got connected. I've probably been stalking you for a while. <laughs> I'm, a big I'm amazed. Yeah. It's fun. Actually, I do know you commented on a friend's insta post about something and i saw to be super honest i saw the little blue check mark i was like oh who's this person <laughs> so i went over but i think you you i wish I, I wanted to go back and look at this but i know that it was something about 90210 and i was agreeing with you and i said something yes. like yeah i was on it and i agreed that xyz whatever it was and you were like whoa Hey. Yeah, this is so cool. I'm like so blown away when this shit happens. But um, what's so interesting about you is that I, for a long time, I mean, up until just recently, was like, oh, that was somebody that was <laughs> in <laughs> PR that they asked, like, must have been a friend of Jenny's that wow. they did, that they did a favor for and put her on the show. You know what I mean? Because, and she's an actress. Like, I, you were so believable in this role oh. as the PR person, you know, that I was like, oh, that's what she does for a living. <laughs> Not only is she an actress, hey. she's an actress, but she's also in PR and has the little black book and the whole, and the yeah. whole mind. Yeah. The, the big chunky, I read, I went back and looked at a bunch of the scenes and I'm amazed at how big, I think she called it her player's book that's what it was it yes. was like shoved in and, and i i actually do remember that prop it was incredible someone yeah. worked incredibly hard made it very realistic very worn very dog-eared you know i was looking at some of the addresses um yeah it was kind of crazy all right so how so you had been acting a while because you've done some other stuff too prior to 90210 like this yes. was like your life so what was that like how did you even get into acting? How did you get the bug for acting? And then how did you start getting parts? And then we'll talk about how you got to 90210. But so how did, okay. where did the bug start from? Yeah. Yeah. Um. True, true, true. I was four years old. I don't know where I was getting it from. My mom said I was running around the house going, ta-da. And she's thinking, you know, she, where has she seen this? And I started performing, you know, for the neighborhood folk. Um, we put on little plays and things. And I told everyone I wanted to be an actress back then. I was going to say actor. And um, they'd laugh because they thought it was cute and absolutely impossible. And I would get very insulted. I was like, it's, it's, I'm it's insulting. Sorry, Anytime I, someone does talks that way, I, you want to knock them out. Yeah. <laughs> you know, this is what and I want to fucking do. Get out, get out, get over it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Right. You know, do you know to this day after decades, um, Every once in a while, someone asks if I get paid. I, it, get paid it, just, it just infuriates me. I just had someone ask me that recently uh, in terms of my film work and stuff like that. Just like, but yeah. do you make money at it? It's like, fuck off. Just don't even, fuck. Like, I don't ask you about your job. You know what I mean? Like, what do you, what do you charge for the burger? Like, I, you know what I mean? Like, I don't ask you your questions. Why do you just with creative people? Why do we get asked questions like that? Sorry, I'm off on a tangent. No, no, you're right. And, or they'll <laughs> yeah. ask how much you, you make. You yes, know. exactly. Yeah. And I'm like, how long have you known? Have we met? You know? Right. Geez. And sure. Artists. Absolutely. A lot of times we will do things um, and not think of payment because we're creating a project and it's yes. out of love and it's out of art and that still will happen. Yes. But, and we could go on another tangent of you teach people about this because when you're younger, you'll do a lot of things to get going. 
Yes. You know, anyway. And, and you'll still and take even, advantage it of that. Even, it doesn't even have to be younger. You could be looking to, you know, get things going in a different way. And then you might take something for less money or do a project simply because you believe in it. And, it, right. and it's right. So, so that's a part Absolutely. of, that's yeah. a whole part of the experience. This is two East coasters fucking <laughs> shooting the shit here. <laughs> Where are you from originally? I'm from New Jersey originally. Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah. Up, up in the like Meadowlands area. And where are you Hi. from originally? Buffalo. Yeah. Nice. And I'm here now. You're still, you're back in Buffalo. I came back. Yeah. There was, yeah. there was work here, New York, back to Buffalo, um, you know, agents in Pittsburgh and New York, uh, you know, working on Atlanta possibly. Well, now there's the strike, but you know, which right. I totally am behind, of course. Sure. So that's a whole other thing, but long story short, I was four years old. I was determined by the time I was in, you know, grammar school, high school, I was doing all the plays, um, went to undergrad for theater and then USC for grad school. And I went out to USC because I had auditioned for different universities and um, there were some back East, but that was the one that got me right into LA because I knew at that point, as much as I love theater and it is my first love, I just got done doing you know some great theater here in Buffalo, some phenomenal artists here. Um, I really, I wanted film and TV and I knew that going to USC would be my ticket, if you will. Yeah. And, um, I stayed out there, I auditioned, I did a lot of theater, but I, um, uh, had an agent come to a play and pick me up from there. And uh, she was fantastic, really believed in my work and came to my plays, which, you know, is it's a big fantastic. deal, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to say. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, really worked hard on on the everything from, oh, gosh, the reenactment lawyer things way back in the day, then soaps and then co-starring, then guest starring a couple of series regulars that didn't live beyond you know, but that's, that's, the, that's the business, you know, yeah. so that's okay. Yeah. No, it was great. And at that time, right around 90210, I had a real nice cluster of a few years of guest starring on things like um, NYPD Blue and Friends and, you know, General yeah. Hospital and Nash Bridges and all these, all these really good primetime shows. So, but I realized when I went back to see a couple of things, 90210 might've been the first Maybe, maybe one of the only times I had my own card. I was top of show. I wasn't shared with other names. I forgot all about that. How so? How how did you audition? What was the audition process for nine hundred two and zero for you? So what's was, interesting is um, your your characters in the last two seasons. So it's season nine and season ten. Yeah. So everybody that you know, like a lot of people had gone and had left the show. I think Luke was back uh when mm -hmm. you were there at some point but there was a lot of new faces with 90210 so my first thing is did you were you a fan of 90210 were you aware of 90210 in the nine ten before before you entered it absolutely yep watched it um you know when you when you get busy you tend to it's not like nowadays where you can go back and binge sure. you gotta catch things you know, so I would catch it now and then. Of course, I knew all the, you know, all the characters and the styles, and it was so '90s and all of that. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I absolutely knew. Yeah, sure. And so, how did it come up? Did your agent tell you, "Hey, like, there's this audition for 90210"? Did you really want 90210? No, like, what? What is the? Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. You know, uh, guest starring on a primetime show is great. And again, back then, they would hold you for the week or ten days that it took to film it. Um, as the years went on, one of my last ones was Weeds or CSI New York. Mm. They started to throw all of your scenes in one day as opposed to keep you for a week. And that's a matter of a difference. Yeah, that's a paycheck. big difference. Yeah, yeah, that's a big difference. Yeah. So, um, but, you know, you bond. You bond if you're with Gary Sinise for 12 hours. You bond. But, yeah. you know, it was different for like over the whole week. And I was very excited. Oh, yeah. And I remember a great story a lot, a lot of good little stories within the 90210 um i knew it was for the publicist and i saw the sides and um uh you know you go in person back then and i'm going to be saying back then a lot and um <laughs> yeah. before i went to i went to the audition and what i thought were hip 90210e clothes okay yeah. and the casting director um who i'm very embarrassed i meant to look him up there were two of them a man and a woman he was they were both great he right there in the audition said, great, I'm going to be calling you back. Now that's great when they tell you right in yeah, the moment. That's huge. Yeah. 
And the thing you usually do for a callback is you wear the same clothes because they, they like the vibe, you know, the clothes bring in the vibe. And a lot of times if they're going to tape you and show it to a producer, they want to say, oh, the one in the red sweater or the one in the blue coat. So and then if you show up in, in another color, it's like, where's the girl in the blue? <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. And, you yeah. know, to be fair, if you're seeing so many, I would do that myself, Same. you know, just like, yes. you know. Yes. So, and I know your producer too, so you get that. So, <laughs> but at this one, he said, I, I would like you to dress like you look like you're part of the whole cast. And I kept thinking, okay, I didn't. And he kept trying to say that without telling me what to wear. So I went to the Glendale Galleria right after that. And I got this really cool car coat, black down to the knees, fitted. And the inside was this leopard print. And I was like, this is so cool. So I wore it to the callback and they taped the callback and then they sent it and Aaron Spelling and a few others were in the room. And I guess Aaron does the final, at least this is what I was told. Yes. Mm -hmm. Two things happened. Yes, he, he was between me and someone else. I don't know who the other person was, but my hair was a little too red. And he said, I don't know, you know, she's got red hair and it's going to conflict with Tori's color. So the, I know, <laughs> and I was like, I'm so different from Tori, but yeah. you know, but this bet, Hey, you know, so when they called me with the, with the role, my manager said, they want you, you know, to dye your hair darker so that you look different. I said, Oh, they're going to pay for it. They went, no, no, no. The, I don't know if this is like telling tales out of school, but I guess the casting director said, you know what? It's the lighting. She's really not that red in real life. Then they told me. And so then I darkened my hair when I showed up on set. Oh, that's and smart. I, yeah, that was smart. That was very, that was very East coast of you. To, to and, but I mean, wasn't that lovely of them too. Yeah. And thus started my, that, I'm, my hair is so dark in that show. Um, but that's what started. I never went back. So there was that. And then the car. Yeah, your hair is still dark right now. So you, you dropped the red altogether all yeah. after that incident. with Aaron. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 You took the like, well, yeah. We're here. Let's go. Right. Um, and then the car coat that I bought from Glendale Galleria, what was that store? Which is, by so the way, great. a great spot. I mean, it's still there. You know what I mean? It's yeah. still, it's still many, oh, yeah. so many great locate yeah. things in there. Food, I would imagine. And, yeah, yeah. I love that. I did. I love that gallery. Mm -hmm. They ended up, you're going to love this. What was my first wardrobe? The same coat, but in red. The exact the, same coat that coat I bought. That you, for that's so wild. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, are you kidding me right now? Yeah. yeah so, so that was a good that was a good purchase. Yeah. <laughs> that coat. Totally yeah. worth it. And then I I really enjoyed working on it. I was there for four different episodes. I really saw sort of the same people. I always saw Jenny. I saw Tori a little bit. Um, I mean a lot in the first episode, but then later on when Jenny came to work for me. Um and I worked with Vanessa Marcel on a couple of scenes. Yeah. Brian I mean so the first, let's talk about the first bit, the first episode, yeah. which is such a weird episode that Leprechaun episode. Yeah. Um and but your bit is the one is everybody like is interested in because you know you're going to do this opening and this whole party. So uh, you were a fan of 90210. You were aware of everybody. Um, what was it like walking onto that set and seeing like the Peach Pit, the Peach Pit After Dark, all these kind of iconic places? What was yeah? What did how did what did like you booked it? So you right, know, amazing. Um, it it's sort of the same thing as when I got on ER. You're inside the thing that you've been watching. And by now, because of theater and other thing, other films or TV things I did, I was a little more aware of, you know, obvious it's a flat or you go behind it and it's a set. But the 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 thing that always happened to me is something switched in my head and I was like, okay, I'm working now. We're here. Let's go. This is what we're gonna do. This is great. And then the other part of me is like, this is so cool. You know, I'm, <laughs> no I'm, in, I'm in the peach whip having like fake, well, it was real food, but you don't really eat it. And there it is. And, yeah. you know, and there it is. And um, it's kind of like you, you shift into the work mode into doing it while you're appreciating it back here somewhere, you know, in your totally. brain. Were you, was there anybody that you built the publicist character around or who did you, wh where did you be? How did you become the publicist, how did you find her? Because as I said, up until maybe a few minutes ago, I still thought you, I thought you were a publicist. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But you know what I mean? Like, I mean, yeah. you're very believable in the role. So where did that um, where did that sort of come from? I, You know, you really have to go back to the writing, whether it's theater, film, TV. You know, the first thing you really have to do is kind of get yourself 
tapped into the rhythm that the writers are dealing with. And and when I watched them back to back, you know, yesterday, I kind of just like scrubbed through and found myself. They really wrote her well. They wrote her like what you would think a typical, you know, full of herself publicist, yet successful, you know, a little dismissive would be. And you kind of combine that with an, an imagination of what someone like that is like. I also had my share before I got with, you know, the wonderful manager I was with for a while um, of dismissive people in interviews. You know, yeah, they're there. And um, while it hurts when you're an actor up and coming to feel dismissed by people in interviews, agents, et cetera, you kind of soak in mm. their behaviors. So what you do is you combine the imagination, you know, of what's on the page and what you're imagining with real life experiences. And then you, you try to tap in and model that. Also, she was a lot of fun to play. Yeah. I mean, I could tell. Okay. So yeah, I mean, and you, and you, but all that experience worked out because it becomes, she becomes an iconic character on the, you know, that, that, that word gets thrown around a bit, but there's mm -hmm. other people that are in that same episode um, that did other things with Dylan or whatever that maybe aren't as memorable. No offense to the other actors, but oh, well, you, thank you. But you, you know, the role of the publicist is something that I know that we all remember. It's because of what you brought to. Brought thank to you. That's that's yeah. awesome. You know, when you're in it and doing it, and and this is true of a lot of the theater roles I've had lately that were really heavy lifts. You know, you you roll up the sleeves. The work's in front of you. You're always thinking. You're always working. You're trying to. Um, absolutely communicate with the other person uh, as if it's really happening right now for the first time, you know, all the acting technique that you know, and then you go back and look at it. So, um, and it was a really good atmosphere too. People were doing what they loved. I really liked working. I remember some of those directors. Um, that was also the first show that when they said, you know, um, uh, print it or whatever, I, I kind of was like, mm. and Usually as a guest star, you don't get to do it again just because you didn't feel you had it. Right. You know, they're, they're losing daylight or they got to do. Um, but this one director said, wait a minute, Josie's not happy. I was like, wow, I've arrived. <laughs> they're actually asking me to <laughs> I could do it again. All right. So let's talk about the cast of characters that you're going to walk into. Was anybody, did anybody come up immediately from the cast and introduce themselves and say, hey, welcome to our world? Um. Brian Austin Green was adorable and was very complimentary and funny and great. He was immediate. Um, Vanessa Marcel, because I worked with her in General Hospital. Mm -hmm. And she looked at me, she goes, I reckon that, I was like, I know, you know, we had, I had a couple of good days on General Hospital enough where I, again, was supposedly a makeup hair person who was hiding a, tape recorder to tape her and Jack's having an argument. Mm. And Vanessa actually holds my arm like to threaten me because she found out I was doing that. So we had like a little intimate thing for GH. So when I saw her, whether I think it was a year or two later or something. So she was, she was great. I, I ended up hanging out with her on set. Um, Tori was adorable. And Jenny too was nice. I, but that was about it. I didn't really get to. Um, Did you see Luke or uh, Vincent Young? No, I think I met Luke for a minute because he was in um, the one called Eddie Watkiss, yes. which was about his dad yes. and Doc Martin as well. And I think he came in, it was a Vincent or he came in while I was leaving the peach pit. So you kind of see them and they're cool and they're nice, but um, you know, I, I didn't, I didn't get to like really meet, you know, I think I spoke with Ian once as well. Cool. Yeah, I mean, he seems to always be, be they, from what I've heard, incredible i am yeah um yeah. well let me ask you this because this season um there is a whole i don't even know if you're aware of this it's an old controversy but either it's the season season eight or nine jessica alba was a guest on 90210 as a guest actress as a younger kid oh. and she says that there was a rule on set that um you cannot look jenny garth in the eye did you did you have that experience with Jenny that someone tell you don't even look at her or anything anything like that? No, 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 no way, absolutely not. That a I would have felt like, well, are we acting here? I mean, we got to be really talking to each other, right? Um, 
No, that's interesting. She really was told that? Either th either that or don't look the – I don't want to spe specify Jenny or don't look the actors in the eye. I mean, she came out and said that that's what she was told. Wow. Well, I don't doubt that she was told that, but no, I never – I was never told that at all. Um, they became executive producers, I'm pretty sure, early on. I don't know exactly when. And I remember we were in um, Van Nuys right near the airport, and we had to hold for the planes a lot. <laughs> right. And, you know, at one point, I don't want to say who, but someone did say whoever chose this location should be fired. And I don't know if they were – kidding or passively aggressive kind of wanting to get that out there. It was, it was a cast member. And I remember the extras looking around the background players going like, Oh, you know, dude, that's really scary. But they were a little frustrated. So maybe it was frustration on set. And someone just said, don't, because, you know, I was fortunate enough to have, like I said, um, a few series regulars, one got on the air, not, you know, for very long. And, you can be approached by people who want to really pick your brain and they want to be actors too. And they yes. want to be your agent. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so it might've gotten too much for it. Cause they were huge stars, you know? So maybe they were iconic, huge stars that, that everybody knows. And I mean, but having said that, like I've heard mixed, mixed comments that Jenny could be super sweet with people on set too. Like, did you have that experience or did you have like the, in the, in between, you know, I had, it was, it was very, okay. So Tori and was was a real sweetheart and Vanessa was like down to earth and she and I were, you know, shooting it. Um and Brian like, was just she's like New York, New York, you know, whatever, you know. She's real. she's she's like 100% real, let's talk, confident. She liked going over lines before scenes, which I do. You know, that that kind of training stuff which is great. Um Brian was adorable because he, I don't, I don't know if this will, it's just funny to me. He he said, I'm going to follow you around because he loved my voice, which was really funny. I love because that. Yeah. I hear my mind. voice and I want to clear my throat. I'm like, really? <laughs> um, so he was really cute. No, Jenny was a lot more, I would just say, I would call it professional. She wasn't bitchy or nasty, but she was professional. But what was very interesting is when I left, when we knew for sure it was my last, you know, day, she hugged me longer than I would expect. I started to pull away and she kept hugging and she was so sweet then. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. But otherwise just a pro, like didn't really engage in chit chat, but I didn't take offense to that. No. I mean, good Lord. You're you know. working. You're working. It's yeah. a, it's a part of the, the gig. I mean, so the, 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 you do the first episode um, and that was it. Did, I mean, how did you find out, Hey, they want to bring your character back because like when that first episode ends, like Donna's really the characters now. Donna's like they're they had a fight, they're kind of done with you, right? right? Like they didn't like what you did. I mean, but you nailed all of that, like all those scenes <laughs> with like uh you, you know, paying the celebrities and all that stuff. Like, I'm totally in. Like this person knows this business inside and out, and then it's just so easy for you, meaning your character. Well, I thank you for that <laughs> because who knew North Buffalo, you know. You know, Italian. It's you the, know. it's the, it's the, so it's funny. definitely the, the East Coast edge in an yeah. LA town. That's, yeah. that's, that's definitely. Like, definitely a big part of it. Um, so anyway, they, the, the character is kind of written off like as a one off, right? So, right? how did you get called back in season 10? Like, hey, they, they like this idea of doing more with you. I remember I was driving somewhere at night in LA. I'm remembering the freeway. I almost want to say I was going through a toll. So where the heck was I going? Um, you know, not a freeway. And uh, my manager called and said, um, they want you back. And it was months later. I was like, really? Because I felt the same, you know. What and can I do the, now? Right. <laughs> yeah. And and that is really, you know, I've, I've been fortunate. Um, was it was it Becker? One of those. Where and also, oh God, I'm I'm like dropping names, but what? No, it's fine. I like when you do that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, not a uh, 24 as well. Uh, 24 Becker and 902 and no, I remember them saying, you know, you could be back. This and the, this was like from a, you know, a, um, a producer or like someone on set saying, you know, it's the kind of character. But 902 and no, 
no one mentioned that, nor did, did I expect them to, because I agree with you. I read the script and it seemed like, oh, what are you going to do? And then if, if you watch the very next episode, here I am walking in with Kelly, like. Like you've been friends for years. Yeah. Right. <laughs> like, like there's a whole other storyline that we've never seen where you and Kelly continue to friendship and whatnot. Like, cause you come in with coffee and like, everybody should just know who you are. Yeah. Oddly enough, we do, which I don't think can be said about a lot of guest actors that just like oh. come in to do something in those seasons. Like, I feel like, yeah, I know who that is. Like, I knew who it was when you walked in, <laughs> when you walked on. Um, Thank you. Returning- I mean, again, you know, you just, the, these characters, she really was a fun character. I think, I think, you know, again, the, the writers and the concept of her, they nailed it, but I definitely, you know, the, the funny part is I have a good friend who plays a lot of bad guys and I play a lot of girls on the other side of the law and Pia's in that spoke. I always say like the axle is the, is the wheelhouse, the wheel literally. And then the spokes are, if I play, you know, a, a single mom or an abused person or someone on drugs or somebody with a gun or a publicist, they all come from that yes. nut of being a strong woman who can be vulnerable, yes. who can be insecure. So the the funny part is, is one of my dearest friends who, who plays a lot of bad guys is one of the nicest people ever. And mm. you're like, how how do you yeah, how do you pull that switch? You know, but oh uh, I mean it's interesting. So when you came back to set uh this time around, what what was it like? Were they like old friends at this point now or um, you know what? I, I always remember being welcome and everybody being really nice, um, but professional too. So I can't say they were like, oh, wow. Hey, you know, but yeah, I mean, the, I'm not remembering. I'm sure there was a little bit of, oh, you're, you know, you're back like Vanessa, Vanessa for sure. And then the funny part is Tori, after these four episodes, after 90210 ended, she got a sitcom pilot and I got mm-hmm. cast on it. And oh. what, what's really funny is when we broke for lunch one day, I remember her coming over to me on the bleachers, almost like she didn't really know anyone else yet. It was really interesting. You're talking because, about on the, on the new show that you were? Yeah, the, yeah on the uh-huh. new show. Because you would think, oh, my God, but it's Tori Spelling and everybody knows her. She, she's she's very, very humble. I mean, these these actors, you know, like you were saying, are so their characters became so iconic that it's so easy to be surprised that they're nice. And, and they know? all are. And they all are. I mean, yeah. I don't have a negative thing to say about, I mean, from doing yeah. this podcast, I've met all of them for the most part and they all are super nice. You know, Brian is the kindest probably, yeah. you know, yeah, he's um, but I mean, not that I'm judging, no. but like, <laughs> you know what I mean? And, <laughs> and Lindsay Price, who you probably met that, that, that who was Janet, you right. know what I mean? Somewhere in that is is one of the sweetest people I know. So I mean, like they're all very nice. Tori is very sweet. Jenny's very sweet. So, um, yeah. I mean, I'm glad that you had that experience. I did, and then I was remembering the fashion show when the guys had to yes. save. You know, there I am painting my nails or helping, not helping them out, but I'm there. And then during the fashion show, I'm nowhere to be seen. But I remember watching it. I was on set that day, and I did meet, sort of meet, you know, all of them. Um, you know, yeah, they were, they were great. I think they were, you know, they knew they had something really cool and they did a good job. This, the, 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 your last appearance is, is in the last season of the show. Um, I don't know if they knew that then, or if that, was there a vibe on set? Like this is coming to a close that this is, you know, this is over. We're wrapping, we're, we're in our last 10 episodes. Cause, and, and, and also, a couple of the episodes are very for that last season are very like hard hitting. Yeah. There's the one with you, you mentioned Doc Martin mm-hmm. with um mm-hmm. you know where they kill off one of the one of the characters that had been there for ten seasons and yeah and there's all that stuff with Vanessa. It was and, really well done. I ended up yeah. getting sucked in Same. when I was watching that episode. They did <laughs> yeah. a really good job, yeah. Uh, and and then there's all that stuff with Vanessa and Tori or Do- Donna and um Gina. You know, so there's like a lot of stuff. Mm-hmm. And you and I think another reason why your character becomes sort of iconic at the ending is like, there's all that heavy stuff, like all that heavy lifting of like really deep stuff. And then there's your stuff with the, with the getting the party together, all this kind of like, she's going to come work for you. And it becomes like, I want to know more about that because this Mm. is, this other shit is so heavy. Do you know what I mean? Um, Yeah. I, I remember feeling a little awkward that my character was helping the, petition to go against gay clubs in high school. Well, I was going to ask you about that. So 
of course, but of course that makes sense for your character, right? For her to be like you know, totally can sell out that way, <laughs> right? Yeah, and, and you know, nowadays, you absolutely would not choose that over the money. Um, many, many people would not, many still would. But yes. what I had to do was justify, just like, you know, when I played Lady Macbeth. I mean, you have to justify these. Actions. You do, and you got to justify, and I justified it that she, it didn't matter to Pia whether or not this was right or wrong. It mattered that the company coming to them was paying them for a service. And she even says to her, you know, we're paid to talk about it, not to take sides, basically, you know, to sell something, not to judge something, I think was the line or something like that. So um, yeah, it was interesting. And, and I'm glad that, you know, that Kelly took her stand or whatever, but it was, it was an interesting point. And during, to answer that question, during the filming of it, I'm not so sure that I knew they were that it was really definitely their last season. But I remember very shortly after we did learn that because yeah. there's always a mention of you coming back. I mean, you've been here four times now, you know. Right, right. But that was it. I mean, that that yeah. that show was I mean, you know, maybe you could have. I mean, there's always a world in which Kelly can if that show continues where Kelly continues to work for you. You know what I yeah. mean? I think that that's not out of the realm of possibility, but they wrap it up because it's like the show is coming to an end anyway. So right. that's, that's where that is. Um, she could have had her own publicist, you know, co yes. uh, company on her own. And then we become rivals <laughs> or, so, or something. There, there's definitely was room for it to do more with you. Yeah. Um, there, there's the whole other episode with the fire and all of that, all of the stuff. Do you remember filming some of that? Oh yeah. Um, I loved the lines they were giving me, you know, like, uh, with the twinkle lights and Kelly's like, that makes me nervous. I'm like, Oh, please. You know, <laughs> exactly. she's having fun with it. Like I'm so, you know, I mean, she's so obnoxious. I also remember, I don't think it was that episode. It was somewhere where Luke's character, I forget Luke's, what is he? He played Brand, um Dylan. Yeah. Dylan says, um, Oh, you know, that annoying woman. Like he, I was referred to as the annoying woman. <laughs> I love um, this scene with you and Vanessa where, you call her, I forget what name you call her, but you don't call her Gina. You call her, you call her a different name. I call her Gidget. Uh, Gidget. Yeah. Gidget. You're, you're like, all right. I, I have to tell you, I, I did my homework. I don't think I would have remembered a good portion of this stuff unless I went back and watched. Um, but Gina or, or Vanessa feels like she authentically laughs at you calling her the wrong name. <laughs> <laughs> She's, um, she was so authentic. Such yeah. a good actress. Yeah. Such a good actress. Yeah. Yeah. And I think her and Brian were dating at the time of this. You know what? I think I knew that after. I got you. Maybe I, yeah. maybe I knew it during or I knew it in between or something. Yeah. Yeah. So mostly uh, when you look back on this ep recording, these episodes, what, are, what what comes to mind? Like, what did you think going down memory lane with this? I loved the clothes. I loved what they did with my hair and makeup. Um, there were very long days. I will say that. Uh, it's very true on episodics. Different with sitcoms, but with, with episodics, you know, you could be there on set, well, back then, for hours and hours until you're needed. So you really had to keep the energy up because, you know, there's only so many bills you can pay, things you can read, phone calls you can make, you know, whatever, while you're waiting. Uh, you start to doze or, you know, then you start, going to craft services too often, um, you know? <laughs> so I do remember, the, I do remember the long days. I remember feeling really special though, like just in terms of my career, that was a real great time for me. There were like a good four or five years of a, of an arc of being on these really great primetime shows. So, you know, like I said, you're there, you're working, you gotta keep it up. You know, you gotta really be in it when you're in it and be true to the characters and the story and all of that. While at the same time you're like, yeah, dude, I'm you know I'm on 902 and oh, and this is pretty great. I was I'm 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 definitely of um, you know, I'm of the mindset and heart and spirit of ex experiencing in the moment and being very appreciative of everything in the moment because I was also extremely aware that anything could stop at any moment. Yeah, you know. So I was never afraid of it stopping, but I certainly had a lot of gratitude and appreciation. I still do. I mean, for the things that are happening these days too, 
always. Yeah, because you're still working. You know what yeah. I mean? You're, you're doing really great stuff. Um, Thank you. On that note about um, about gratitude or whatever, I mean, and, 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 and about working, um, as a working actor, being here in LA I'm at, at that time, I'm sure it was competitive. And I'm sure there were times when you were like, I don't know if, I, if I'm going to do this. I don't know if I'm ever going to get a job again, right? Those kinds of intrusive thoughts always come like coming into play how how did you handle some of that stuff how how what do you do what is your process as an actor or as a creative i think i've been blessed with cockeyed optimism and uh <laughs> because if you look at the resume you can say wow oh, yeah she works a lot but that's can that's over how many years right there there might have been one year where i guess start on something three times. And that was a lot for my journeyman, you know, level, if you will. And there were, there were definite highs, you know, like being on four different episodes or, you know, depending on the show or the ratings or this, that, and the other, but I did theater all the time in, in order to keep my technique really going, you know, keep the chops sharp. I was in class a lot, um, doing things like Ibsen and Sean Shakespeare to really keep that going. I love it so much that I absolutely knew that I was always going to be in it. And there were absolutely times when I was a little concerned about the coffers, a little concerned about the bank account, concerned about not being represented uh, in a way that I felt was really showing my range or, you know, um, always racking your brain how to get out there. I became a good marketer. That was one thing. Uh, I would send out postcards and get real creative about the things I said on the postcards or that kind of thing. Cool. So you got to keep it up. And, um, you know, someone once said to me recently, the brain is the most powerful thing we have. And uh, when you really are believing you're in it and working as if you are in it and making the baby steps every day, it's amazing how the, the universe kind of conspires. You get the phone call out of the, what feels like out of the blue, but it's not magic. It's because you're, you know, placing the pebbles in your manifestation of mm -hmm. the good, and the goodness of what you want. Right. Because yeah. if you, you could have been the act, an actor that focused on the negative and then you don't talk, we're not talking about this. You know what I mean? There's a lot of those situations, yeah. you know? So, yeah, I think what happens is when, when you're, I, I always called it the, you never know factor, you know, I still live it. I absolutely still live it. Um, but when you live that way, you're like this and you recognize what, is a possibility when you're like, Oh, forget it. You know, they never do da, da, da. This is what you see. So yeah. it really, people can poo poo the woo woo, but it's not magic. It feels magical. But if you're laying the groundwork and you're networking and you're doing this, doing that and keeping open, it is a manifestation of, you have to take the action. You can't, yes. you know, yes. just sit there and hope and pray and imagine. What was LA like at that time? doing 90210 did you get kind of swept up into the into the the beverly hills of it all oh yeah i mean my friends we'd get together we all dressed like that and you know maybe not so upscale all the time but certainly because friends was around then too the end of friends and you know um and you know there's that whole vibe of of the fashion and you know back then we were we were way more body shaming and body conscious I mean, I look back now at those, uh, I'm like, wow, I don't think I remember eating. <laughs> you know, like, so crazy. Yeah. I'm like, wow. wow. Um, but still, I'm good. It's okay. I feel good. Um, but there was that too. There, there was a lot. There was a lot of that, of yeah. being a very small size and still concerned about my thighs. You know, like I'm not on now. I, you know, and I've had that a couple of times here on this podcast where people were said that about even the girls on that on that show, that there was that they were so thin and there was such a, there was so, they were so worried about that. Did you yeah. get that? Did you oh, feel that? Yeah. I, I never, you know, what's interesting. I wonder what they would say to this. I'm not so sure. All right. There was one agent, a male who told me once I, I, I was, I was a lot chunkier before Beverly Hills 902. And I was on friends. I was definitely chunkier, but even if you look at that scene, you don't, See right. It, it's not, it's not, it's not even a, a yeah. real concern, right? Well, thank you. And for <laughs> yeah. me, it really of was. Course. So, but then I ended up losing, I mean, like two sizes and, and got really tiny and, um, and it wasn't on purpose. It was actually a, a family issue. And, uh, 
you know, we went through grieving this and the other. So that uh, that happened. But anyway, I was like, oh, I think I'll stay this way. And then I I definitely was trying to do it healthfully anyway. Um, and I do know how to eat. I'm very good at nutrition. Anyway, so when I when I lost all that weight and I ended up seeing this agent over this time, he actually said to me then that now I'm he felt I'd be more castable because I was more so affable. Funny. I don't know if I could say I don't want to say the word. I was more doable. Yeah. Oh, that's fucked up. What a fucked up thing to yeah. say. Yeah. I thought that's yeah. why I'll get more jobs because I'm more affable. Okay. Mm. So I was like, but I was like, oh, okay, well then I'll I'll stay small. And then when I got on that show, I thought I was the chunkiest one there. Yeah, right. I don't you really know? see that. Still <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But, yeah. you know, um, I remember on Desperate Housewives, another drop thing. I'm sorry, but it was great. It was a great time. Um, I played a cop. And in one 30 second, you know, time period, the props guy came up to me to give me my gun belt as a cop. And he goes, wow, your waist is so tiny. I got to put more holes in this. I'll be right back. He leaves. Wardrobe comes over and she pats my thigh and says, what's in your pocket? And I said, my leg. <laughs> and she goes, oh, I'm so sorry. And I said, it's okay. I'm just, I'm just not anorexic. I mean, I didn't mean to be snide, but I was like, wow. What? She was used to much skinnier. And I was, so I was small. Then. Like, I know. Well, so, I mean, how do you even... How do you get out of all that? Mm. Because that's so damaging to a young actor or a young person, a young female. You know what I mean? Like, and that was our world. That's what, like the. That's what, like, I don't. I don't think young people understand. Like, that was our world, and we weren't the group to like protest it. <laughs> you know right. what I mean? Nowadays, those younger kids would probably tweet about it, you know, and say this, this person said this fucked up thing to them. Oh, my God. But so how do you internalize all that as a young actor? And then how do you get past all that? Well, I'm not to get way down a rabbit hole and heavy. Um, We're there. So, OK, <laughs> yeah. well, let's get a little heavier. I had an eating disorder for almost nine years. I was bulimic and I was mm. bulimic when I was heavier. And I couldn't lose the weight because I was bulimic because I was screwing up my metabolism so badly. Right. I wanted to be thin like everybody in L.A. when I got there. And I wasn't. Now, if you looked at me back then, you know, most people thought I was a little crazy, but they weren't getting on these shows with these really thin, beautiful women, by the way. I mean, Vanessa, I, I just my God, I was obsessed. I was just like that woman and she was healthy and gorgeous. So it isn't like they were all anorexic and hurting themselves. It's just that I came from DNA, you know, and the, you know, genes and, you know, sausage curvy and Italian. Peps. You know? Sausage and pep, ravioli. I mean, I got it. <laughs> oh my God. Eggs <laughs> and peppers and eggs. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So, um, so it became a real problem, but I ended up having people in my life who cared from, cared about me and my family very, very much. And also sp people in my life who are also very spiritual and some of them family members, um, that I really was guided to go back to myself and really appreciate myself and stop slandering myself mm -hmm. and understanding. Um, you know, my brother and sister are really, really instrumental in helping me with that. And um, I started learning about food. I started learning if I had an Oreo, I didn't screw the day. So I want to have the bag and then tomorrow I'll be good. And I stopped saying good. Mm. Food does not have a moral value. Food is not good or bad. Right. You ate the pasta and you had the cannoli and you enjoyed it. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And you might feel sick and like, oh my God. Well, then you don't do that the next day. You just, right. You it's can't just... do that every day that that week. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. You know, but... unless you're home for Christmas in Buffalo when you live in LA. That was tough. So so it was that. And then I then this is the big thing. What I learned once I did lose the weight and then kept it off healthfully, it's amazing how many people really cast dispersions on food see you eating healthy, they feel guilty, and then they start pushing food on you. Mm. You're not going to eat that? Oh, my God. What are you doing? And I would say, after a while, I would get real defensive. You know, I'm vulnerable. I'm an actress. I'm sensitive. So I was like explaining, you know, until I finally realized, oh, my God, they're looking at my plate, and it's reflecting back on how they feel about themselves. And then mm. I finally said, I don't look at your plate and go, you're eating all that? Why are you looking at my plate and going, you're not eating that? You know. 
they were pushing it because they wanted to feel better about themselves. And then I had to start almost giving them therapy. Like, it's really okay. Enjoy. Don't worry about me. I'm not judging you, you exactly. know? I'm, I'm curious. What would you say? I don't, I was going to say a young actor, but, or actress, but I mean, it, it goes beyond actresses, right? I mean, this is a, this is, oh, yeah. the, this is the world that we, that we are in and people struggle with this. What would you say to someone that's going through it? What would you tell your younger self that's going through that? What would have, what would get what would have gotten through to Josie back then, right? What would have gotten through and what finally got through actually came from Larry Moss, one of the best acting coaches, teachers, actors himself, directors of the of yeah. the art, is you're enough. When he said that to me, it was about my acting because I didn't believe that if I just lived in the moment and experienced it, that it would be believed. I felt I had, and this was before all this work started coming to me. I mean, he was instrumental because I finally let go of trying to act like the way I thought the character should act and just experiencing. I tell my students now, if you're not experiencing it, either are we. But if you're shoving it at us and you're in your head going, hey, how am I doing? Then, ugh. and that was what I was doing in my life. Mm -hmm. I didn't know I was enough. Yeah. You know, that right here, right now, and how people, listen to how people, if you need validation, listen to how they're reacting to you. You know, it was a real self-sabotage that came from being a chunky little kid and being told I was, mm. you know? So it's about really knowing that you are enough and also seeking validation in a way right like about where where do you seek that and and how how can you someone teach themselves that they aren't enough it's hard hard it's crazy and it, and crazy it's hard different, it's different for different people that the topic that we're in is different for different people in different ways it might not be food oriented or weight yeah. oriented it might be in different it, it might manifest itself oh, in different ways. relationships yeah. totally you yes. absolutely can get stuck again and again and again thinking you're in love and really what it is is you're needing to be approved of by someone who's not right for you but if they approve of you then you feel validated right it really does come back to that as opposed to recognizing it's all right someone's not right for you it doesn't mean you lost a game Right. You know, and yeah. and uh, it, it it's so hard. I think what happened to me, to be really honest, is I got so sick of feeling horrible and sick. Bulimia is an incredibly disgusting, horrible, self-sabotaging, ill thing to put you through. And that's why it took so many years. It was very gradual to get over, over, over. You You have to grow spiritually and psychologically and you have to work on your relationships. And you know, you're right. It wasn't just about food. That behavior was everywhere in my life, which is why having an acting coach recognize, he didn't know I was bulimic, but he recognized that part of me that probably brought me, you know, to the eating disorder. Um, no, it's it's not gonna be, here's the other thing. Bulimics want instant gratification. I wanted, I knew it was horrible. I think the difference between that and some other diseases, you don't recognize that you have this disease. Most bulimics recognize something is terrible and they mm. want to change it and they want it to be gone by tomorrow. Right. And it's not going to be. You got to do the work. Yeah. I think that's really important stuff. I'm glad that we had this conversation beyond 902 and 0 because there's a lot of important stuff that you're talking about here. And um, I think there's a universe of people that are still struggling with a lot of this kind of stuff. I mean, clearly that's a thing, you know. And if we, you know, you can be a voice by talking about Pia for a little bit and help someone else on their journey. I mean, isn't that like really amazing? I, I, you know, I'd love to, and I have in the past, especially when I came back to Buffalo and um, or actually more out in LA too. But you know, over time, there's a, there are a lot of, or there is a lot of students now because I taught at Niagara University for almost ten years here in Niagara, near Niagara Falls, New York. And Niagara University has got, you know, a wonderful theater department. And you saw over the years, very few, the number of women, especially, who aren't worried about their bodies anymore. They're wearing what they want proudly and looking beautiful. Yeah. By the way, I really want to catch myself on something. And this is really important. Mm. I was snarky 
when I said that to the wardrobe woman um, on Desperate Housewives, when she patted my leg and I said, I'm just not anorexic, that was really super insensitive. And I'm realizing that because I know there are so many people, men and women, and and all sorts of uh, people out there suffering with it. And so please know that was an insensitive. Oh, I understood what you were, I understood the, I, I know, understood but what for you anyone meant. listening, I, yeah. that was... I was fucking insensitive, and I'm real sorry about that. No, but you knew. I knew it. I knew what you meant and where where it was coming from. I mean, yeah. anyway, um, I'm curious. Do you or did you get recognized from being Pia? And you know, I mean, if 90210 fans are a rabbit, and so they know everything that you did. They know the sound <laughs> of your voice. They're wondering if you have the black book on you when you go <laughs> <laughs> of the player's book or whatever. I mean, so yeah. did you, did you get recognized from 90210? I'll tell you about that player's book. I'm sorry I didn't know that was the last episode. I would have wanted to pilfer that thing. <laughs> I would have loved it. Gone, hey, it. look what I have. You right. know? Yeah. Um, yes. Yeah. So great story. I mean, this is such a wonderful long interview. I don't know if you Yeah, know. I mean, this is this has turned into more about everything. So I'm I'm so happy. I'm glad that and you're I love talking to you. You're awesome. Um, thank um you. but uh uh so I as I said, did a lot of theater in LA and I got a role. And something called Naked Will, which is, I love this. I want to do it in Buffalo. I want to bring it here. Um, it's about William Shakespeare and uh, how his book of sonnets was found by Oscar Wilde. So you, it begins with Oscar Wilde talking about finding this book of sonnets. And as he's talking to his friend, um, another actor, the, there's, we come out as Shakespeare and the Dark Lady and Burbage, who was an actor in the in Shakespeare's day, and kind of act out the scenes that Oscar Wilde is talking about, he thought might have happened because he felt that the Book of Sonnets was dedicated to a young man. And now mm. it's known that most people are pretty positive in the rumor, if it is even one, that Shakespeare is bisexual, et cetera. So it's a mm. really cool play. So I, I met a few people there that became dear friends from that. And one of them is Adam Huss, who's an incredibly uh, prolific actor right now, working, producing his own films. He's in a lot of things, film and TV, Adam Huss. And we were rehearsing one day and he played Shakespeare's lover and I played the dark lady. And we were rehearsing one day and we got into a conversation. And I, by the way, told the story about Aaron Spelling, thinking my hair might've been too red and the casting director's coming to my rescue. And he goes, Oh, and he yelled, that's where I know you from. I said, what? He goes, oh my God. And he got fanboy, like mm -hmm. <laughs> 100% mm -hmm. fanboy. I have you on tape back then. Oh my God, you're in my living room right now. He was a huge fan of 90210 and he couldn't place me. Amazing. <laughs> so so <laughs> there was that. And then I went to the dry cleaners another time. And she recognized my voice. Isn't um, that weird my, that someone recognized your voice? Yeah, I kind of right? can't get away. When I was in corporate America, so my side hustle, I never waitressed. I was a nine to fiver. And I actually, because I really like business. And that's why I was, I love marketing myself. And I still do it to this day. I do my own website, whatever. And um, uh, I was, you know, somewhere. Oh, I had to make a phone call to somebody, um, you know, I was a real estate assistant. So I was talking about like, I don't know, a parking lot. And I called this person. And I think the last time I talked to them was only once. And it was about three months ago. And they said, oh, Josie. Over the right. phone. Yes. Again, you know, asthma and uh, bronchitis, you know, my whole life. So it was like, you know, whatever. Um, but then another time was here in Buffalo very recently. Actually, a couple of times in Buffalo. Mm. Um, they, they, uh, there's a young woman who knows I'm going to do this podcast. She's like, yeah, let me know what it's on. But she's the girlfriend of one of a producer here in Buffalo. And she recognized me. I didn't even know it. And then she told me later, but, and it surprises me though, because I have not done, you know, enough of repetitive things, whether it's recurring or a series or some big movie where somebody would recognize me, but 902 and O is the one. Yeah. I mean, there's something about what you did in that, in that, in those four episodes that's just incredible i mean you brought thank so you. much to that thank you. Uh, and and 
and it's also the thing about it that's interesting about just more of a credit to your to your work is that it's in a time because there's a point of 90210 where you can go on 90210 as a guest star and just get recognized because you're on the most iconic show mm. on television, right? So everyone is like, oh, I know that actor, I know that. But you're at a time of this series where it is winding down and the show is not as maybe, the episodes aren't as memorable as Donna Martin graduates, right? Or, or something that is yeah. from the past. But you are still memorable in the period of time where it's not as memorable, if, wow. that's, if that makes any sense. So, it, well, it, thank it, you. It's I mean, something, a testament so, to what you brought to the character. Of it's the so energy. lovely to say, though. Thank you. It's very true, though. I'm not just like, it's just something that you should know. Um, and she is very different from them, too. Yes. Again, mm -hmm. to just say, yeah, I was lucky to play a character who might have dressed like them and, you know, was within the storylines, et cetera. But she definitely is, you know, a different kind of character too. For sure. So but like, I mean, there's other actors that could have played that very LA and very, and very Beverly Hills and it would have gotten lost in the shuffle, but that's not what you did. You brought, you, you, you gave it this, this authenticity, right? That's what we're all about. So Larry Moss is right. You are, <laughs> you are enough. You Thank know? you. And, you're more, and, you're, and more than enough. So, that's so sweet. That's yeah. so sweet. Thank you so much. Well, thank you for doing this interview. This has yeah. been so much fun to talk to you. And um, let's keep talking. Not yeah, right let's keep now, talking. but like, like just in life. I mean. Absolutely. No, <laughs> yeah, I'm yeah, yeah. in, yeah. in it. I'm in it now. I, I really, yeah. really enjoy talking with you. You, uh, th This was a real bounce in my step. It was real fun uh, to go back and really appreciate again all over all over again on my time at that point. And, uh, oh, I love talking with you. I, these yeah, three skills of talent, we're in trouble. Guys. Let me ask you a question. So if people want to follow you and what you're up to, what is the best way the 90210 fans can, can follow yeah. your life? Um, I'm at, uh, I'm on Instagram. So I'm a Joseph Phoenix one and I could spell that out, but really probably if you search for me, yeah, you'll just, see that. Yeah. So Joseph, search, Phoenix her, one. search her on Instagram and you can follow all yeah. of her. And then I've also got a website, josiedivincenzo.com. Are you working on anything now that we should be excited to see soon? What's going on? That is very sweet. Um, not that I knew of, as they say. Ironically, I did have an audition yesterday. Okay, for, so that um, you're going to get. You're going to get okay. that. And then you're going to come back and you're going to talk all about that thing. Yes, <laughs> yes, I am. yes, I am. And for theater, um, the, the, the work I've been doing in Buffalo has been some of the best roles of my life. Um, Buffalo is a real theater town. And... Um, you know, there are films that come through here. We, you know, there's been some, I've worked with Chad Bozeman, um, may he rest in power when he came through for Marshall about five years ago um, and a couple of other majors that have come through, but it doesn't happen as often. So I really, really dig the theatrical, you know, life that's here and I'll be directing. I also was directing, so I'll be directing again in the fall. So there's, you know, there's stuff that really, really keeps me in it. So that's awesome. That's yeah. really great. Well, thank you. Uh, for being Pia. We really appreciate it. You did an amazing job and uh, thank you. just appreciate talking to you. Have a good great. one. Thank right. you so much. Talk All right. soon. Thank you. Bye-bye. Yeah. Bye. -bye. Bye.